Good morning. Oh, good morning, good morning. Now it's nice, but it's low white cloud. Oh, let me just maneuver my way out onto the motorway. How are you? You looking well? Good, good. It's a bit of a, started off as a bit of a funny day today. The, uh, how can I, where shall I start, where shall I start? Let me start on Friday. Because Friday was when I noticed something and I mentioned it to Mrs. Angry at the time. And she's well used to me saying things like, do you remember I, do you remember I told you this was happening? I told you this was happening. So, and she's like, yes, yes, yes. But she doesn't actually remember me saying this. <coughs> and it was all to do with um, the American national debt. Now, the American national debt has gone up to 35 trillion or something. That's how much they're overdrawn. It's more than 100% of their gross domestic product which is the sum total of all the income they generate every year through the sale of goods and services. And when your uh, national debt goes up to more than 100% of your gross domestic product, it's generally regarded as a bit of a point of no return, you know. Um, now, I know what you're gonna say, I know what you're gonna say. Angry Japanese have been at 200 and something percent of their GDP for decades and that is true however that does not mean that eventually there will have to be some sort of reckoning and you know it's quite likely that their reckoning is coming pretty shortly as well but what what's what is the reckoning though Henry well what happens is to uh, finance their operations if they're not getting enough tax in, governments issue IOUs or bonds, as they're called. And the, uh, you know, you anyone can buy a government bond. Lots of countries buy government bonds. So, for example, Japan buys government, the U.S. government bonds. So did Japan. Uh, so did China until recently. The uh, Dutch, for some reason, bought a lot. Anyway. It's a bit like buying uh, dollars. So what you're doing is you're just buying an IOU which is repayable in dollars, which is the same as buying dollars really. So you're taking a punt on what a dollar's gonna buy, say in two years, five years, 10 years, whatever, 30 years. So stick with me, okay? Because there is a point to this story. So, I just can't remember what it is. Hang on a second. No. So, the government, the US government is, um, runs a trade deficit, which means that they import more than they export. So they have to print money to buy the difference. And they also run a fiscal deficit, which is uh, fiscal, uh, anything fiscal is to do with the government, taxes, um, etc. And uh, what you have to also, um, understand the difference between fiscal and monetary anything that's monetary is to do with the amount of money in circulation and that has to do with the central bank central banks charged with more or less making sure there's the right amount of money in circulation for the free movement of all the goods and services uh, so that because if there's too much money then goods and services uh, people who produce them tend to demand more because the money's more plentiful so it's worth less uh, and if there's not enough money, then uh, people tend to demand more money for their goods and services because the money's worth more. So um, you get consumer price inflation, and retail, uh, producer price inflation, all those sort of uh, price inflations. But it's also important to understand that price inflation is not the same as monetary inflation. In in increasing the amount of money is true inflation. That's inflation of the monetary base or the monetary supply. 
consumer price inflation is a secondary effect. That's what happens when you print too much money. The price of everything goes up, and so you get consumer price inflation. So all inflation basically is caused by central banks. And central banks cause it because they keep getting these IOUs from the government and demands to uh, print the money that's covered by the IOU. And so the central bank ends up with a basement full of IOUs and the uh, treasury ends up with a, a vault full of, um, well, computers full of money because it's all done digitally now, right? So the numbers on the American debt are truly staggering. I mean, they are really... I mean, those of us who've been following macroeconomics for years could see 10 years ago that uh, th this was not going to end happily. Uh, right the way through um, really everybody after Bill Clinton. So starting really with Barack Obama, um, just started printing money. Obama started all the printing money, then it was carried on by Trump. And Biden has just now gone, he just doesn't care, he just doesn't care. So, the Americans used to have a thing called the uh, debt ceiling where they knew they were in the shit. So there'll be, oh, there'll be a few. <laughs> Whenever you talk about American economic policy, there's gonna be a few instances of the word shit throughout the commentary. So just forewarned, okay, this is, um, Cover your ears if you're offended. So they knew they knew they were in the shit. So what they did was they brought in this rule that said the, the government cannot uh, print money. They can only print it up to a certain limit. And then if they want any more past that point, it has to come back to Congress, it has to be debated. Congress has to agree to raise the debt ceiling. And this was, a, you know, this was an event. This was like celebrated every two or three years, probably less than that. They would take the uh, bill back to Congress and they'd say, we need more money. And they would say, well, that's the whole point was to stop us spending money. And they, they would say, well, look, this is, uh, this is already spent, you know, we are gonna overshoot. So, it reminds me of my surgery in the early days when uh, at the end of the month my receptionist uh, god bless her uh, said you know Derek we're going to go over our overdraft limit this this month you need to put some money in and you know she didn't care that we were running at a loss or that you know I would didn't have any money to put in or whatever. She was just like, sorry, the money's gone. <laughs> so, need some more money. So, I'm sure we all recognise that, don't we, boys and girls? We all know someone like that, don't we? So anyway, they, um, but then a couple of years ago, they decided that this was all a bit of a charade. And all it did was frighten the horses and so they abolished this debt ceiling thing because uh, it was, you know, it wasn't doing what it was supposed to do, which is keep a break on spending. And so, of course, spending went, has gone berserk. And they're, on, they're, they're racking up debt at a rate of about half a trillion a month at the moment. And the um, interest on the debt, because the interest rates have gone up, uh, because uh, interest rates have gone up and so the interest on the debt is now 30%, 30% of the entire government budget. <coughs> so it's their second largest expenditure. Social Security is their largest expenditure. And then second, ahead of their armed forces, which they spend a lot, you know, they, they spend more than the whole world combined on their armed forces, and yet it's not that bill is not higher than the bill on the debt. It's higher than uh, well, it's higher than everything, right? So 
America is a basket case. And we know, <clears throat> those of us who sort of quite, who trust maths, could see this. There's no way, the death, you know, something's, <laughs> if, you, if a fire is growing at 10% a minute, you're not going to extinguish it with uh, water that's only growing at 5% a minute. So now, <clears throat> to recap, for those of us who haven't had the, the angry 101 economics case, there's three ways to extinguish <clears throat> debt, aren't there? One is to, <clears throat> One is to default on it. In other words, just turn around to the armed services and say, sorry, we're not paying your wages. We haven't got the money. You'd have to default on Medicare, Medicaid, uh, pensions, state, you know, for all federal expenses, not pay the FBI, the CIA, etc., etc. That's not really an option. Let me just put it that way. There's, <clears throat> grow, grow your way out of it which is the way that they always cite. And that's where you, uh, your debt is increasing at 5%, let's say, a year, but your economy is increasing at 10% a year. Now, in that way, the debt as a, as a burden on the economy gets smaller and smaller. And that's the way that they got out of the um, debt of fighting the Second World War, which is pretty similar. Um, but, but there are big differences. Because now the America is a net, uh, is a debtor nation. It's a debtor nation. They are, they borrow money to buy everything. Just after the war, they were an exporter. Uh, they used to make money from their their, their uh, export account was in credit. In the same way as Japan is now, and so they got a lot of kudos for that. And you know they were. Uh, they didn't have all the debt and interest payments and everything at that point. So they managed to pay it down because they had a healthy economy, a strong economy. And in 1948, there was the, the Bretton Woods agreement, which made the dollar the sort of the de facto world reserve currency. So everybody had to buy dollars because if you wanted to trade on the world stage in the world shop, then uh, everyone was buying and selling dollars. So a lot of dollars were created and they went offshore. And they're called Euro dollars. Nothing to do with Europe. They're just any any dollar that's not on the mainland United States is called a Euro dollar. And uh, there are far more Euro dollars than there are actual dollars. So you could say that the uh, Euro dollar became the tail that wagged the dog. But anyway, we get this point where um, Japan's managed to get away with it because it's got a current account surplus and uh, exporting surplus and so the world has sort of turned a bit of a blind eye to Japan because they've also they've got a ton of money squirreled away you know they've got a lot of stuff which they bought when they were doing really well which they're going to use I don't know trenches on the left you know what trenches mean don't you trenches mean houses Trenches mean initial archaeological exploration, therefore houses. So that's so that's where we're going next. That's the next bit of arable land. Probably all this as well, for all I know. So, so the Japanese have got managed to get up to 220. Now, the Americans, who are, if I had to choose one word to describe Americans, it would be dumb, and that's the word they would use, that's an American word. And really it just totally sums up their, uh, the way they do everything. And what they've done is they've run up this debt because they can, basically. Because they, they things haven't collapsed, they haven't been held to account. By the way, the other uh, the third way to get rid of debt is literally to devalue the currency until it takes, and my favourite phrase, £9,000 to buy a ham sandwich. And that's really the only practical way. 
But the problem is the uh, population doesn't like it because the population is basically wiped out. And you can ask anybody who lives in any country in uh, South America what happens to your life savings if you get consistently high inflation. So we've got a situation now where the government's fiscal policy is to say that they're going to grow their way out of the debt. I don't think he's going to go up this hill that fast with that. I'm sorry to you. But their real policy is to inflate their way out of the debt and basically excoriate the middle class. Now, the thing is, this the math problem I was talking about. It, it's quite obvious, and it's been quite obvious for some years, that there is no way out of this debt. It's like uh, it's not. It's like uh, someone who's um, you know borrowing and stuff on a credit card and paying quite a high rate of interest, and needs to get another credit card and borrow some more to pay the interest on the first credit card. And the American government are doing this in the trillions. Um, hence the fact that the the 35 trillion um, overdraft. So what's this all got to do with me, angry guy? I don't hear what you're saying. This is, a, this is supposed to be a podcast with some sort of dental dental input. So first of all, I think it's incumbent upon you to learn a bit about the macroeconomic. Uh, environment that you're working in so you can decide whether to take on an associate or invest in a new OPG or whatever otherwise everybody carries on fat dumb and happy until it all breaks which it did in, in 2008 but on Friday what happened was that there was a there was a subtle change a lot of the people who were you know like the canaries I would call them who've been for years have been saying you know, this debt situation is intolerable. It can't carry on. You guys, you know, don't understand what's what a, a situation we're in. It's, you know, it's worse than you think. Um, don't tell me this roundabout is completely free of rope work. Holy moly. You saw it here first. That's it, all done. Ah. Well, that was only took them two years to do that, didn't it? Brunel will be proud of them. So these people who are, you know, the, the, the warning all the time, people have been accused of, you know, the chicken littles. Now, instead of warning, they're now starting to say something completely different. And that changed on Friday. On Friday they started saying, okay, we're gonna forget the warnings, that's it, we're going we're going over the edge, you know. Instead of uh, being in a car and shouting at the driver because he's driving towards a cliff and accelerating all the time, they've never said, that's it, we're about to go over the cliff. So I'm not even gonna try because we can't stop now. We probably couldn't stop years ago. You're not listening to us anyway, so here we go, here we go. And they don't know whether it's gonna be a day or a couple of weeks or, I mean, it could even be a couple of years. They've got all sorts of weird things going on. They've got, um, Kamal Harris has just replaced Joe Biden as the candidate for the Demo Democratic Party. And she's, I mean, she's to the left of Arthur Scargill in terms of public investment so I think there's all sorts of factors they so investors are worried about her uh, because you know she's probably gonna make a better fist of fighting Trump than Biden was um, the Japanese and the uh, Chinese who used to have quite a big store of uh, American government IOUs bonds have now for, for a, about a year or so been selling them and so you can imagine what that's like when you've got you're a government official 
in the um, treasury and you're trying to sell IOUs on the open market and every Chinese person or Japanese person is also showing up with armfuls of them wanting to sell them then uh, you're going to have more trouble selling them aren't you the value of them is going to go down and because of some funny fixed way fixed interest rates the way the bonds work which I won't go into now the more the value the more the price of bonds goes down the more interest rates go up because they, they pay a fixed interest rate so they represent better value for money if they go down so uh, yeah and um, I mean in the UK we've just had a Labour government elected and the Chancellor said you know everything's fine at the moment but um, I'm gonna have to put taxes up on October the 30th and we're already at a 70 year high in terms of tax so 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 what's happened is markets have opened seriously lower in the Far East that opens trading before we do uh, bitcoins I think has dropped seven percent I don't know whether this there was definitely a change of attitude change of mood on Friday just with someone like you know just people saying I'm not I'm not bothered anymore I'm going to this is it you know we're here we're here now as far as I'm concerned we're here and let's just uh, sit back and watch it you know so on my next podcast what I'll do is I'll probably go over some ways that you can you can sit back and watch it from the relative comfort of your you know your dental surgery and uh, and not suffer too much okay all right talk to you soon bye